The National Democratic Alliance looks all set to retain power in Bihar as counting continues for the 2020 election in the state. Uh, against all odds, that what the exit polls had indicated on Saturday, the JDU BJP combine is either close to the 120 mark or past it as certain numbers continue to move. Uh, as of 5.36 p.m. on the Election Commission's feed of data, we had the NDA crossing that 120 mark. Those numbers are moving a bit. The RJD Congress uh, left alliance has, has not performed to the expectations that were set into the second and third phase of polling where uh, there seem to be a lot of crowds gathering at Tejasri Yadav's rally. Uh, for the first time, the BJP has emerged as the single largest party in Bihar and the JDU, which has led this alliance for three consecutive terms, has right now gotten relegated to the third position in, in strength in the state assembly. Uh, so that's where those numbers stand over the last half an hour or so. Uh, to discuss what this mandate means and the manifestations of what this means at the time of a pandemic, uh, the migrant crisis that we've seen for the last six months, and where Bihar goes from here. Joining me is uh, Shaibal Gupta, the member secretary of the ADRI in Patna, arguably the state's foremost political economy expert and social scientist. Thank you so much for making time for Bloomberg Quint. Uh, what do you make of the way the numbers have panned out of the last seven, eight hours? I think we should uh, wait for some time because still uh, several seats have not been counted mm -hmm. and they are in very close uh, race. So let the final counting take place, then only we should come to definitive conclusions. Um, I got information that around 30, 40 seats are uh, in the margin of 1,000 votes. So okay. it can go on either way. Okay. But no doubt, uh, everybody had predicted that there is a Tedeshvi tornado which will, which will sweep India. That has not taken place. India has been able to hold on to its position. Mm -hmm. uh, the most surprising thing is that JDU declined from its uh, position, uh, from earlier position, and BJP has gone higher than their previous position. Uh, this was primarily because that. LJP, which put up candidates against JDU in all the constituencies, uh, they cut into the social base of uh, JDU. In the process, JDU was disadvantaged. Uh, wherever RJD had to face BJP, they were loser. Mm -hmm. But wherever RJD faced JDU, they were winner. Mm -hmm. Broadly, these are the broad indications that I am getting. Okay. So, uh, so, in the process, JDU has emerged as a third largest party so far now. Mm -hmm. so this is the broad conclusions that I am getting. Okay. from this election. With the caveat that you said right at the top, uh, that we need to wait, that unlike past elections, because of the manner in which uh, the the number of EVMs and the number of booths were expanded considering the pandemic, that counting continues to happen at a slower pace. So so we must, as you, as you said, I tell our viewers that counting continues and these seat numbers continue to move. Uh, as things stand, um, does the promise that the BJP gave to Nitish Kumar, that were the NDA in contention to state power, uh, that he will be chief minister, uh, does that stay intact with the, with the JDU's tally so much lower than the BJP? Or do you see some movement happening there if, that were to, if they were to go to the governor to state claim? Uh, does Nitish Kumar com continue to enjoy uh, the, the unstinted support of the BJP for the chief minister's post? I think uh, BJP will uh, continue to support uh, Nitish Kumar mm -hmm. for the chief minister's position 
because that was their stated objective. Mm -hmm. And they have said it several times that even if um, BJP's number is more than JDU, mm -hmm. Nitish Kumar will remain chief minister because the election was fought uh, in the name of uh, Nitish Kumar. Mm -hmm. You see, whatever may be the campaign narrative of LJP, Nitish Kumar's image at a state level is still very high. He is a leader who is considered to be man of probity. He has not accumulated wealth. Uh, he has built the state from 2005. And he resurrected the state and he established the authority of the state. And if you see some of the things that he has done, especially in the sector of roads, uh, electricity, uh, water, these are quite unbelievable. In Bihar, nobody could imagine that you will have 22 to uh, 24 hours electricity uninterrupted mm. connection that mm. uh, um, that is there now roads are much better there are several bridges so nitish turned out to be a very important provider in the context of bihar so in that sense the anti incumbency uh, against him was not that monumental, though mm -hmm. the migration was not handled very properly, nor mm -hmm. employment got a thrust in Bihar. Mm -hmm. But overall, it was a functioning government, and uh, Nitish Kumar was a functioning chief minister. Fair enough. I, I want to take up that very point, sir which is that for the opposition, they couldn't have asked for more forces to be to be at play in their favor. Um, a pandemic that resulted in the state's health infrastructure getting under pressure, a migrant crisis that meant that lakhs of people had to move from other states into Bihar and need temporary employment, uh, an ally of the NDA who chose to step out and contest against seats where the JD was contesting, uh, an age profile of the challenger in Tejashri Yadav that matched the sort of the challenge, the, the age profile of the workers who were disenchanted and found themselves at home and not at work. Um, if all of this couldn't rise to giving some, some win to the opposition sales, uh, what else could have? No, that indicates the India government under the leadership of Nitish Kumar, hmm. had done solid work in Bihar. So hmm. the anti-incumbency, uh, I think, is not working uh, hmm. massively. It is working. It is partly there. But uh, Nitish Kumar is able to do achievements in several fields. Hmm. His main, he had to uh, I think uh, negative points that was handling of migrants and he has not been able to make a substantial breakthrough uh, in the realm of uh, employment. Mm. But he has been able to enable the state economy. He has been enable the uh, state uh, population that they could go for um, other uh, activities. So in the process, uh, I think uh, these are the main achievements of Nitish Kumar. Okay. So in which case, I want to know from you, what would to your mind be the agenda for the next term of the government that takes office? Uh, Nitish Kumar's first term from 2005 to 10 was about, as you said, a lot of construction activity, fixing roads, bridges. Uh, the 2010 to 2015 term saw, saw a big step up in telecom connectivity, 
uh, and the third term saw fair amount of schemes towards uh, girl children and making sure that there were incentives to send them to school and a lot of of social schemes that were stepped forth some and the last two and a half years of which were with the support of the central government as well when it shuma switched back sides to the nda uh, now with all that work done of the next last 15 years what's on the plate that needs to be done for the next five first he has to uh, consolidate whatever he has done so far mm -hmm. uh, second that uh, he, he has to expand the market of bihar by uh, various uh, economic activities uh, bihar market in any case was small with covid the activity has declined so the market has shrunk and in the process not only we are getting promised gst even the tax collection from this market is limited so there should be a strategy to find out how to generate revenue in the context of bihar uh, third that he has to transcend from his uh, position as a provider to a enabler of people mm. who can change the economy to a capitalist bottom up capitalism because he has been able to provide various thing but he has not been able to change the uh, production relations in the way says in south india in andhra pradesh in tamil nadu in uh, in maharashtra bottom up capitalism worked which lift frog the economy to a great height now maharashtra will become at least before covid it was predicted that by 2025 it will become a 1 trillion economy now that has not taken place and bihar is not a enforcement centric state in the way other states are so people will have to follow the enforcement where state can play a very decisive role because okay. economic activity cannot take place where there is no trust trust is a very important thing and it emanates from enforcement consciousness so that is the most important thing now nitish kumar has to transcend the bihar economy from the present situation to a market centric capitalist economy then only we shall be able to live frog to a greater height all right uh, on that note thank you very much for joining us sir and uh, for viewers who wish to know what uh, what was said in that last answer i would urge you all to go to bloombookin.com and read what travel gupta wrote in a beautiful column last month where he broke down the gradient of how economic activity in bihar has had legacy issues pre independence post independence and thereafter in how certain infrastructure and structural logistics issues have become impediments for capitalist activity to to take take fruit and 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 bear out into great economic activity thank you very much for joining us uh, prabhu gupta and if you have been watching thank you